Hey everyone, it's Shalita O'Neill, founder and CEO of Fostering Change Network and creator of the nonprofit Visionary Academy. Today, I'm going to be helping you to figure out how do you get foundation funders to fund your nonprofit organization. And when I say foundation funders, I mean um, people who or organizations, nonprofits, the larger funders that tend to be foundations that give out dollars to nonprofits like yours. So we're going to wait a little bit because I want to make sure that those who are interested in hearing this, which should be everybody, um, that is either running a nonprofit, whether you just started it or not. This is some good information that a lot of people don't know and that I didn't know when I first started my nonprofit organization. So um, come on and join in. I'm going to give people a couple of minutes and then we'll go ahead and, um, and get into it, okay? So I'll be here. Couple minutes. Because I'm a little early, actually. I think I'm a minute or two early. So I just wanted to give you guys an opportunity to join in. So come on now. Get y'all coffee or what have you. And have a seat. Or multitask. You're a nonprofit visionary. You're probably doing a lot of different things right now. So. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna keep it short and sweet unless you guys have questions. So please, I hope that these videos, if you're finding them useful, please make sure you share them, you like it, get the information out there. This is free information. Um, it's really important. It's things, again, I could say, like to say nonprofit, hashtag nonprofit, no filter. These are some real things that you need to know when you're building your nonprofit organization, thinking about building a nonprofit organization, when you're running your nonprofit organization. These are things that you really need to know, um, again, because uh, it may be the glitz and glam of starting a nonprofit, or it might be daunting the other way around. Um, but there are things that you don't know that you don't know. So, and you don't know you don't know them. So, I'm here to help you with those things. Okay. Hey, Justin. <laughs> Make sure if you have any questions or anything, ask me. Ask them because you're good for asking the questions. Thanks, Justin. I'll ask, answer, them, answer them for you. So, here we are with. A little bit after some one minute after noon, after 12 noon. So we'll give one more minute and then I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Because the good thing about these things, you can record them. Put them out there for later. So again, we'll be talking about how to engage foundation funders around your nonprofit. Because there is an art to it. Okay. Hi, Ishan. Long time no see, lady. Hey, Justin. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining. I got some good information for you. Okay. Please share. Take a minute to share it. Like it. Love it. You know. Let me know. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get into it because I value your time. I know you're busy. And we got to keep things moving. It's Friday, okay? This The weekend is right here. You got some things to do to get ready for the weekend. So I just want to give you this. Drop a couple of gems, okay? And then send you on your way. Oh, well, we're going to build it together, Ishan, okay? So, getting started. Now, I've learned a lot, a lot, a lot about running a nonprofit organization from starting my own eight years ago. And there's things around funding that people really, you know, in the dark about. Maybe it's not commonplace knowledge on how to engage funders, the people who are actually going to be um, funding your org. Thank you for sharing, Ishan. Um, the people that are actually going to be funding your, your organization or, the, or the, the foundations that are going to be doing that, they're made up of people, right? So before, what I was telling you guys, I've said before in my previous videos, that it's not about sending a grant proposal blindly and, you know, let's cross our fingers and hope that we get something. Or, our, or hiring a grant writer to come in and write a magnificent grant proposal hoping that you're going to get funded. 
It doesn't happen that way, especially when you're new and when you're just starting up and the funders don't know who you are. You have to build up a relationship. These are people. Just like you wouldn't want, if you had a bunch of money, you wouldn't want a whole bunch of strangers just emailing you and sending you, you know, messages and, you know, out the blue. And they've, you, you don't know who they are. You've never heard of them. You've never seen them at any of the meetings in the community. You've never, 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 never. So I'm going to share just a couple of things because there's a lot of different ways. We could go on for days on strategies and ways to really um, build up relationships with funders, but I'm going to go over just a couple of points. And one of the things you want to do before you start approaching any funder is to research, 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 research what they actually fund. And that may seem like common sense, but really, you know, with all the excitement, you first start an organization, you're just like, oh, oh, this this foundation sounds like what they do is, you know, in line with what I want to do, or it says it in their name. And so of course they want to fund what I'm doing. And sometimes it's, it may surprise you that even though some of the things like maybe, you know, a lot of the foundations will say, well, we like to fund education and, um, um, workforce development and things like that. Even within that, they break it down even deeper on specifics on what kinds of things they like to fund. So even though they may have a broad description somewhere, you really have to do your research. Go on their website um, and to see who's on their board, like who sits on the, the, the board of the foundation. Do you know any of these people, right? So you want to make sure that you're going and you're doing your research, you're talking to people about this foundation. There's um, a couple of different ways that you could do this. You can either go to this online funding directories like grantwatch.com, um, I believe the Foundation Center. There's different, you can Google it, there's different organizations or different um, online platforms where you can find grants and, and by category, by um, cause by interest area all of that so use that as one of the ways that you reach out to see you know well who are the what what grants are out there who are these foundations what do they typically fund and does it fit in with what I'm doing are they going to be remotely interested in in what I'm doing and and part of that again is looking at their board of directors who sits on there do you know any of them you know through any of your work in the community or does, does your board know any of them because again your board we're hoping are connected and in, in the community you know they're networked so you know find out who, everything about this you're doing you're, you're pretty much interviewing researching this organization to see if what you do fits in with them another way that i've found that has been really helpful and getting more of an in-depth um, look at foundations and who and what they fund is if you hear a name um, about, you know, you hear a foundation that maybe you're working with um, ch children with autism and you hear about a large foundation that's maybe in your area that funds autism, um, then you can go on to GuideStar, I believe it's GuideStar.org, um, and you can go Google that to GuideStar, and you can actually look up the 990s, which is the tax document um, for the foundation found any any nonprofit matter of fact so if you're even looking to partner with different nonprofit organizations you can go on this website and look and see get their 990s see who how much money they have brought in right for the past tax year where did the money go you can see who the board members are what um, the staff members are being paid that's all of that all the financials which is in the 990 document you can go to guidestar.org and and get that um, get and I'll put the link as well in the description and get a thorough in depth view of what that foundation funds. What are the other organizations that may be similar to yours that they funded? How much they fund them for? Because that's another thing. You don't want to reach out and when you're having a conversation with the fund, a potential funder, you say you want $100,000 and they typically only fund $30,000. So making sure that as part of your research, you're looking at how much do they typically give, what types of organizations organizations who they typically give to um, and, and just what their overall financial landscape looks like and what they're interested in. Okay, so that's one thing. Make sure you research, research, research. And by this time, when you're looking at foundation funders, I'm hoping that you've already looked at other nonprofit organizations in the community. I think the last uh, Facebook video that I did was really about 
okay, collaborating with other smaller nonprofit organizations. You're going to need to be able to do that. The ones who want to be collaborative and that you vetted and that are good would be good collaborators. You already know who they are. So go on their websites. See um, who are their who are their funders? Their 990s. All of this is public information. Okay, so don't feel like you're doing some crazy type of private investigator illegal stuff. <laughs> no, yeah, it's it's nonprofit. So you know the public gives to these entities. So the public has a right to know their financials. So always know that. Always look for the 990s. Um, okay. Also, we're in a technology age. I get it. So it's not all just about you know looking through the foundation directories because they have those two. They have, I used to um, get the, what is it? The ABAG, Associated Baltimore Area Grant Makers Directory, which is just hundreds of grant makers and funders that are in the Baltimore area, which is where I was. So I would also take a look if, you know, in your area, in your state, if they have something similar, I'm sure they do. So, um, you know, make sure that you're looking through those two to, to get sort of, and they give a thorough rundown of all of the things that I just talked about. So that's another way to find out, you know, who you can align yourself with or who you should be thinking to reach out to. But you've got LinkedIn, you know, you got Facebook. So drop a line out there and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. Anybody know of any foundations that this is their area of interest? You know, so make sure research, I cannot say it enough because then it's going to build up to the next part, which is reach out for a meeting, an in-person meeting. Now, you, ideally, you want to start with engaging funders, foundation funders in your community. Okay, so and and there and if there isn't, you know, a lot of, depending on where you live, there's not a lot of funders, and that's that's something different. But you want to start first with who's in your community that you can actually have a face-to-face, in-person, sit-down meeting with. And what I typically like to go is one of two ways. You can email them because don't email them a grant proposal, okay? <laughs> don't send them, don't just go on, online and, you know, find a, a, a common grant application, fill it out and say, bam, here I am. I'm the answer to your prayers. Give me some money. They're not going to do that, okay? Don't send them a grant. And, and in fact, a lot of the, propos the, the um, foundations don't accept unsolicited proposals. So that's a turnoff. And that's also something in your research when you're looking through the directories, when you're looking online, when you're learning about them, they'll tell you whether or not they accept unsolicited proposals. A lot of foundations, they will select you or they will reach out to you because they've done their research on you or somebody that they know, which I'll get to, has come to them and said, hey, you should look at this organization and they reach out to you. And then they solicit you like it's sometimes, you know, a lot of times it's, it's not the other way around, especially when you're talking about the smaller family foundations that give a lot of money. They don't want to be bothered with a whole bunch of people reaching out to them. So you want to make sure you know that. So when we're reaching out for a meeting and I, my favorite is via mail, snail mail. OK, don't judge me. But honestly, there are a lot of the foundations. If you think about where does a lot of the old money come from? Right. They're family foundations. They've been around for a while. Some of the family foundations or the people that are running them are trustees. They're family members of, of the foundation. They're older a lot of times. Not always, but the ones that are going to be looking, you know, to get to know you and try to feel you out. They are older. And so they may not be on LinkedIn and they they have a lot of money. So they may not want to be you know, accessible, socially accessible like that. So, but they read mail, okay? They like to see things, they're visual. So first and foremost, what I like to do is put together a small packet, right? Not, don't send them 800 different annual reports or all kinds of articles or a 15 page uh, case statement. Keep it simple, but eye catching. Put together, even if you get a folder, a nice little pocket folder, on one side, maybe you have your one pager with that just tells tells them who you are, what you do, why you do it, you know, and if you've gone through the Dream Your Nonprofit in a weekend, the Nonprofit Visionary Academy with me, then you would already have and know what that is. Have a one pager. If you have a brochure, 
you know, make sure you put that in there and your card. And if you want to put maybe one other, if there's a specific thing that you've done the research and you know that they are specifically interested in employing foster youth and you are proposing a program or have a program that is doing that in a unique way, then maybe you might want to put a, a short write up about that. Maybe you might have a, um, maybe a brochure or some piece of marketing that shows you in action or something with that. Then put that in there, but keep it simple. And then make sure that on the front of the, 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 the folder, you maybe have your logo, right? You know, come on, make it eye catching. I know I, one thing that a funder said to me a few years ago was that it was a breath of fresh air getting my information because they typically get, um, you know, I have colors in my logo. I have, you know, the, the language that I use is not droning on and on and on. And the 15% of the 30,000 of the blah, blah, blah. You know, put your passion and your life into it. Of course, you want it to be a, a nice balance. But make sure that it's, it's eye-catching, right? Because this is your brand. And again, if you're working with me, if you've, you know, seen, seen the online courses, you would know that branding is everything. And when you're putting that into your logo and your brochure, you have to understand it. it's a message. It's a, it, it has to give somebody a feeling. When they open up that mail and all they've gotten are stacks and stacks of, you know, dry letters from people who want money from them. And then they open it up and see your proposal or not proposal, but your, your, your materials, right? Your, your high, you know, this is, you know, even I've gotten little insp um, inspiration or cards, postcards with um, with uh, little quotes on them, like of inspiration that they can use to write, you know, to, to give to people and things like that. Thanks to Jessica Watson with Jay Watson Creative, who does all of my, my design work. They see that and they're like, oh, this is different. Okay, so I, I say all that to say, if you're going to put together something and, and mail and mail it to them, Make sure that it's eye-catching. Make sure, of course, you the grammaticals. It has to be on point, and your cover page has to make a draw a parallel between what you say you're doing and what they're interested in, and be very clear about that. You know, maybe and a line in it that says, you know, from looking at your website and and talking to a couple of colleagues who have worked with you on blah blah blah. Your interest is da 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 and. It is, so is ours. And this is how we plan to help you reach more of the population you care about. And that's key, right? Because ultimately, the funders and foundations, they, they do not have the bandwidth or the interest in a lot of times to go on grassroots and do the work, right? That's not what, they're, what, what, they're, what, they're, what they've uh, committed to, right? They care about the work and they care about the issues, but they don't have the bandwidth to really, you know, change or, or put or pour into programming and things like that. So they're giving you their money to help them. So this is another way when we're shifting the conversation around funding, you know, sometimes we're like, oh, I don't, I'm not good at asking for money and I'm not good at, mm, you know, I don't know what they're going to think. You're helping them. So shift your perspective. You are helping funders to do the work that they care so much about, but that they cannot do for one reason or another. Okay. So look at it like that, because that's really what it is. And the executive directors of these foundations that more than likely you're going to be reaching out to, or who's going to get this, this, uh, this hello in the mail from you or via email from you, it is their job to work with you. It is their job to answer your questions. It is their job to possibly meet with you if it fits in with what they're interested in. And I've actually had um, one executive director of a foundation who I love very much. Um, she's awesome. Um, and she told me that, you know, it was just so, um, I mean, I've worked with a number that, you know, have been really sweet and, and, you know, welcoming and things like that. But that this one specifically told me like, okay, well, that's, what I'm supposed to do. I'm like, I know, but I know you're busy, but I'm sorry. I don't want to bother you. Or she's like, no, this is, I, I want to hear from you. This is what I do. You're making my job easy. So I don't have to beat the bushes on, you know, organizations to take back to the trustees or to, you know, to the board to give recommendations on funding. Like, thank you. So 
again, when you're reaching out for a meeting, keep these things in mind because that, you know, mindset is a hundred percent, you know, sometimes in certain situations. And so the way that you, um, approach the people that you're going to be reaching out to is really going to be important. The confidence that you bring and, and the way that you handle yourself or the intentions that you set are really going to be the difference between whether they remember you and want to work with you or remember you and don't want to. Okay. So those two ways you can email or send them a, a, a piece of mail or the, you know, the, a, a packet, a small packet with information about your organization with your beautiful, brilliant marketing materials in it. Um, or you can email, you can, you know, PDF things and, and, and send an email for initial meeting as well. Do not ask them for any money. Do not ask them for any money. This is just initial. Let me get to know you. Let me introduce myself. Can I meet with you? Okay. So, um, you want to do that. The next thing I would say is stay persistent. Persistence, 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 bug, 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 bug. And it's important because everybody's busy and don't take stuff personally. If, if you've reached out and you sent your, your beautifully, you know, created and crafted marketing materials and they haven't gotten back to you and it's been a couple of weeks, make a phone call. You know, follow up and say, typically the way I like to do is I'll send that my, my materials first as a hello. And then, of course, in those materials, it, you put your contact information. You say, you know, when you have an opportunity, I would love to be able to speak with you or meet with you to discuss or share more and learn more about what you're doing. And you wait. And sometimes people will get it and be like, oh, my goodness. And they'll call you or they'll email you and say, I've received your materials. Um, you know, and give you next steps. A lot of times that won't happen. It'll be silence because they're busy. So follow up with a, with a phone call. Okay. If, if you, if you sent it via mail, I would follow up with an email. If you haven't heard anything in a week, um, or two, if you, if you sent the mail, you got to give the mail a chance to get there, get it a chance to get processed, you know, be patient. Um, if you send an email and you haven't heard anything in a week or so, pick up the phone, give them. And through your research, you would have found out who their assistant is or what the phone number is, how what, how they like to best be reached because some people don't want to be called. So you would know that. But if that is not an issue of theirs, you could pick up the phone, give them a phone call and say, hey, you know, this is blah, blah, blah. I just sent this um, information to you about my organization, blah, blah, blah. I just want to know if you got it and if you had some time to meet with me. Point blank, simple. But but keep on, unless they say, please leave me alone. I got you here in that typically not going to say it like that. But they may say, you know what, at this moment, uh, that that's not a part of our focus or our focus area um, at this moment. But thank you for your materials. Or you may get a generic letter that says, you know, thank you. We received your information. If we can think of anything we can partner on, we'll reach out to you. You know, but whatever. Um, but until they say something like that, keep following up. Keep following up. And then Again, as part of research, you already know who's on their board or what what organizations their board members may be attached to. It's a small world. It's about who you know. It's it's who you know, who you know, who you know networks. And LinkedIn is a wonderful way to see who's connected to who. So if you you might know somebody that knows someone who sits on the board of that foundation that you're trying to, to reach out to or know an organization that has gotten funding from them in the past about something that knows the pro, one of the program managers, then reach out to them and have them reach out to the person that you just reached out to if you don't hear anything. So it's all about who you know. Don't give up until they tell you, leave me alone. Okay. And then let's say they get back to you, which, you know, they will, some will, many won't, but some will. And because you know, the whole thing is, is if you can get out of, out of all the foundations that you reach out to for meetings and, and things like that, if you get 20 to 30% of them with a yes, then that's a, that's a victory. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, you don't need everybody to say yes. You don't need everybody to be, everyone's not going to be interested in what you're doing. Even if they say that their cause, it, the, your cause fits in with theirs. Or even if you look at that and you say, wait a minute, you say you fund foster youth and I'm doing foster care. And they're like, we are not interested in foster youth. That is fine. Keep on moving. Keep on reaching out. There are people out there who will connect with you, who will be impressed by how you're approaching them and who will support you. And when they do, and they say, sure, let's meet, you know, you, you let them know my treat, you treat them to lunch or coffee or whatever the case may be. 
This is a real human interaction. This is developing relationships and it should be genuine. Okay. If you're a phony person who at the end of the day, you're just thinking about what money you can get out of them, then you're going to have problems. Okay. I'm just, you know, that's, this is really about being authentic in your interaction because, you know, starting a nonprofit, I would hope that it's authentic. And I say this to you, this is hashtag nonprofit, no filter. Okay. I would hope that if you're starting a nonprofit, you're doing it because you actually want to give back to your community or you know, the world in some way, shape or form. This is a selfless sort of thing. Okay. So you making sure every interaction that you have with people who are you're engaging around your work is authentic because funders can smell it if you want to reach out and just be all about you. Okay. So, and, and it'll be, you know, they won't even, you won't even get to the lunch part. You won't even get there. They'll just shut it down. Okay. So, um, that's just my, my little nonprofit, no filter that I throw in there. Be real, treat them, listen to them, listen to when you get that meeting with them, make sure you listen to really what are their, what are their initiatives? Really? What are they working on? And how can you help them? It's always about a service. It's always about support. How can I help you? do which, what it is that you said that you're doing for the community or that you want to do for the community. And if you see there's no parallels, because sometimes I've sat down with funders and maybe what I'm doing is really doesn't really fit, but that's still a relationship. And the fact that they still give you the time of day to sit down with them, to hear about it, it may not work for you right then. It may not be an opportunity for you to collaborate right then, but if you continue to maintain that relationship, it might come a day when, because they know you, they sat down with you, they've heard foster care, or they've heard your issue, or they've heard something, they think of you and they'll call you, okay? So, um, and okay, so Ishan's question is, I like to take notes when I'm talking with people, is that inappropriate at the initial lunch? No, I would just let them know that and say, you know what, this meeting is very important to me. I'm, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to meet with me. And I'm going to take a, I want to make sure that, you know, if you see me taking notes to capture, make some of what you're sharing with me, please, you know, it's just because I want to make sure I remember, but you don't want to be the whole time at lunch, like with a sandwich and then right in and... <laughs> You don't want to be like that. But if you have to take notes to capture some key thoughts, then I wrote that. You know, just be real. Let them know that. Yeah. So, excuse me. Again, it's, okay, um, you get that meeting. You connect with them. You ask them questions about the history of the organization, where they're going. You may even get some small talk in there. And, and some, like, I don't even think all talk is small, right? I mean, people say small talk, and and you look at it in a certain way. But for me, I like to know who I'm talking to, the person. You know, sometimes they'll share, you know, a lot of the, the people who are overseeing, especially family foundation, they're family members of the people who have the money. They're people, right? This is not, it's not like they're nine to five. You know, this is something that they're doing that because they care about or they want to keep the legacy going for their family member. So they're people too. You might find out they have children. You might find out that, you know, they're married. You might find out that they like, um, they like long walks on the beach. Like, I mean, this is, you're talking about a human connection, you know, really when you're there, be present to an open conversation about the possibilities, right? Not just in your mind, you can't hear what they're saying because you're thinking about how I'm going to get this money. How am I going to get this money? How am I going to get this money? <laughs> Stay present. Once you have this meeting, everything else will fall into place if you're authentic and if you're present. Okay. So next is, and I think I, I share this. So reaching out to them by way of intro from another funder. So maybe you know a funder or you already had, have a foundation that has given you seed dollars or, you know, you know someone, um, you want to definitely, let me see. Okay. And I'm so, so the logistics, sorry. We've got a question, Ishan, about, um, where do you actually have the, the lunch logistic of, of the meeting? Um, and what I would say is I would leave it up to them on what's, you know, whether they want to lunch or, you know, typically I keep it general and say, I just would like an opportunity to sit down with you and learn more about your foundation um, and what I'm doing and if there's any potential ways that, you know, what we can partner. Right. And then, then if they're, if they say, okay, let's do that. Then I ask them what's best for them and where do they, where would they like to meet? So that way you don't have to worry about price range or any of that. If they cho pick and choose the place, um, you know, their, their foundation fun funders, so they're not going to 
take you down to a roof, Chris, or tell you to meet them at some like expensive steakhouse place because they typically don't like to to you know to have lunch meetings there anyway. Um, you know, it might be like a Panera or something like that. So I wouldn't worry about that, but I would put it leave it in their in their court. But you wanted to make it as convenient as possible for them. Okay, I hope that answered your question, Ishan. So, um, like I was saying before, funders know each other. Funders talk. They talk, they talk, they talk. And it's a small funding pool, depending on if you're talking about local funders, everybody knows each other and they are their support system. I mean, honestly, it just makes sense. So, you know, again, they, they have limited resources with, awesome, um, they have limited resources with a bunch of people wanting money. And everybody, I mean, one of the things I always said is I would love to be able to be on the other side and be a grant manager and like oversee, um, you know, nonprofit portfolios and things like that. But I know that part of it will be that there's so many people who you want to support and so many people you want to help, but you have a limited amount of funds and you have to be strategic about the money that you give. So, you know, you're helping them or the funders are helping them. Each, each other, right? To to figure out, um, um, you know, who is out there, who's really doing something that's noteworthy, who's already funding who. Um, and, you know, so, oh, we have another question. So our network, our networking events, a good way of building relationships and connecting with the right people of, of yes, most Definitely. And that's the, that's another thing that I would, I would stress is get out there in the community as you're, you know, researching what foundations, you know, what may be interested in it is what it is, what you're doing. You need to have your ear and your pulse to the ground in the community on, I mean, there's, there's always networking events. There's, there's uh, fundraisers. There's, you know, you might have to, you know, drop twenty, thirty dollars to go to somebody else's fund. I, mean, I hope you would do that anyway. But go to somebody else's fundraiser, okay? That's doing something in the community that might it might be you know in the same similar vein of what you want to do, and then the, more than likely their funders are there. They are giving shout outs to their funders. You know, the board members who have connections to those funders are there. So networking, any place where it has to do with people that are connected to the work that you're doing, you want to go. You want to, you know, join a chamber of commerce. You want to go to where the people are that are movers and shakers in your community and you want to meet with them, okay? So in in a networking event, you have more people in one space at the same time. So it's not like you have to do a whole bunch of one-on-one -on -one lunches. You, everybody right there. So you go and you have, you know, have a conversation with them and then get their card and follow up later. So yes, Justin, networking events, as many as you can, your face must be seen. Okay. Your face must be seen. So I'll go back to, uh, touch on a little bit, like I said, of the funders know each other. So funders talk to other funders. Okay. So again, if you already know a funder that's been supporting the work that you're doing, ask them and, and then, and go take it a step further and say, you know what? And I've had this, I've been blessed to have a number of foundations and funders who have introduced me to other people. Same people who you sent the letter to or you emailed and never got back to you because they don't know who you are. When that same message comes from somebody that they know in their funding community, they respond. And I've had that happen on numerous occasions where, you know, the funder has said, Hey, um, Hey, whoever, this is Shalita and she does this work and we funded her and we supported her and I just want to put you two in contact. Then somebody, they're going to get back to you, right? Not, there's no promise that they're going to fund you, but there's a, there's, you know, they're going to get back to you so that you can at least have an opportunity to create that face-to-face -face sort of memory with them and make that contact. So, you know, make sure that you are leveraging the current relationship that you may have with um, either you or your board members have with foundations because they do talk to each other, very much so. I've had found, and they also talk to their grantees. So, you know, when you're out there and you're putting your best foot forward, Hopefully, and your branding is there. You know your intentions. You're off. You're authentic. You're you have a collaborative spirit. You know you're gonna have built some positive relationships with some of the grantees. And I've had funders call me and say, "This organization submitted a proposal to me. What do you know about them? They're in your space. What do you know about this? 
Okay. So you, your reputation and how you lead is extremely important. So you want to make sure, um, you know, that all of your bases are covered when you're interacting with potential funders. Cause if you go to a funder and you completely turn them off, you know, you're not listening, your, your marketing materials is way off. You, you know, they're funding education. You're talking about saving the environment. Like they are going to share that with other funders. Okay. And you may never hear back from them, but you'll wonder why is nobody responding to me when I'm reaching out? Well, because one person told another person, told another person that told another person. It works both ways. You impress, they tell. You don't impress, they tell each other, which is natural. It's normal. Everybody does that. So, um, but I just want to let you know that funders do that as well. So I hope, um, this all has been helpful. I'm going to recap like I normally do Get my little recap. I really want you guys to get that getting funding is really a, it's a people, it's a human game, you know, and not a game as in it should be played and not taken seriously, but it is it's real. Okay. Resource development, getting support, lasting, sustainable support is about people and relationships. So you want to make sure that you don't waste your time approaching funders who are not interested or, you know, or approaching them in a way that's going to turn them off immediately and, and really thwart any, um, efforts that you were trying to make in connecting with them. So, First, you just want to make sure that you research them. You know, you research their what they fund. You research how much money they get in every year, who they give their money to. It's good to know who the staff are. All of that, again, if you go to GuideStar.org, I believe it's, I'll put the link at either .org or .com, GuideStar, okay? And you can look up all the foundations and where, you know, what they've given, their financials as far as their 990s and for the year, where did the money go? All of that. Use that as a tool, as your research tool, making sure you're reaching out to your board to getting information as well as other grantees, you know, other, other nonprofit organizations who may have received funding from who you're looking to reach out to. Do your research and make sure that what it is you're doing or proposed to do actually is in line with what they care about. Number first and foremost, then you reach out for a meeting. I prefer mail, snail mail sometimes with a pretty marketing you know, not too much, just very simple to the point, but well thought out. And with the, the cover letter that specifically says, you know, the making the link between the two, because that's the sentence they're probably going to circle is what does this mean to me? Everything else is blah, 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 blah. Okay. So I'm making sure that you do that again. It's snail mail because a lot of the, the large foundations that are family run, excuse me, they're, they're older. And they like to see, they like to see things. Or even if it's an, it's an executive director that's running the family foundation that may be a family member or related to a family member, they're taking material back to the board. And typically they are older family members and, you know, um, they want to see it. They want to see, they're visual, they want to see this. And not all foundations, but I'm just saying that when you're talking about the family foundation, some of them don't even, you know, you can't access them via email, you can't you know, you better write a, a letter or something. Um, and then there's also email. You can also do an email, reach out to them, especially if they're not within, I guess, driving distance or within, you know, um, a close enough range for you to say, I want to do a face-to-face -face or in person. But, you know, email, it, it works too, you know. But I just, I have my little, I just like to, you know, put something together. People like to get something and be like, Ooh, and making sure that it is eye catching. There's something different about it. You, it's, it's, you know, to the point you thought well through it, you know? Um, and then also be persistent. So if you don't hear back from them right away, keep following up. You send something in the mail and you don't hear anything. Follow up with an email, follow up with a phone call. You send something via email. You don't hear follow up with a phone call, keep following up. And so they contact you and say, thank you, but no thank you. Keep following up because people are busy. Do not take things personally and feel like people are ignoring you or any of that. I used to, when, you know, when I first started, I used to be like that. I'm like, everybody, why does I want to get back to me? This is crazy. I'm, my, my program is amazing. Why doesn't everybody see this? Just don't give up. Keep, keep following up. Keep following up. Keep following up. Um, 
And then once they do get in contact with you, make sure that, um, you know, you, you offer to treat them and you leave it up to them with the most convenient for them. Um, and Ishan asked, what all would you include in the packet, the cover letter, folder, brochure, testimonial sheet, or FAQ sheet? So I would keep it simple. Again, the cover letter, right? That tells them why you just re you reached out to them and how you two, your two organizations or what you bring to the table fits in with their focus, which is the, the biggest thing. You know, you can say a whole bunch of other stuff, but you have to draw the parallel between what you're doing and what they care about. A brochure, you know, something showing visuals of, you know, what, what it is that you're doing. So maybe a brochure, you, if there's a specific program that really does align perfectly in your opinion and what they want to fund, put something about that in there and your, in your card, like keep it simple, you know, as far as FAQs and testimonials and all that type of stuff. This is just to, to, to um, pique their interest, okay, to, to get back in contact with you. When you have that one-on-one -on -one meeting with them, if and when you have that lunch, then you'll bring a little bit more, so maybe some other little, you know, cool things with you to that meeting. But you just want to give them enough to pique their interest and give them enough information so they can make an informed decision about whether they want to follow up with you or not, okay? And then, so, you know, also what I, to recap, make sure that, you're reaching out to, you know, researching them or reaching out to other funders who have funded you in some way, shape or form or supported you, or maybe you met them at a networking event. They didn't fund you, but you have a good rapport with them. Reach out to them and let them um, know what foundations you're trying to reach out to. And, um, you know, they, they know each other. I promise you, they know each other. And even if you reach out and say, these are the foundations that, you know, I feel like are really interested in, in what I'm doing. What are you, what do you, or could be interested in what I'm doing? What do you think? A funder will tell you, okay, well, they say they might be interested in this, but they're actually working on this or they're behind the scenes. Like, okay, well, there's a lot going on at the foundation right now. So I will hold off. Or did you think about these other foundations that I'm connected to that maybe I can plant a seed for you and send an email out, an introduction, um, introduction email out to connect the two of you? So make sure that you're going that route as well and make sure that everything you do, you do it in excellence, right? The nonprofit, no filter, hashtag nonprofit, no filter. Um, make sure you do it in excellence, right? You want to make sure that your marketing materials that you're sending out is in excellence. Like it's a brand. It's, it makes you, it, it induces a feeling. Your grammar is correct. You're, you're, you are authentic when you're on the phone and you're talking to these people. Like you are charismatic. You are because they are going to remember how you present and whether you woe them and they're like, wow, oh, I got to tell everybody about this or whether that you underwhelm them tremendously and they're like, I got to tell somebody about this. You, you determine, right? So I just want you to be aware of that. So, um, if there's any other questions, you guys, if you, you know, c continue to, I know this will, you know, I'll make this, um, recorded or, or accessible to people who aren't able to join. So as you have questions, just put them in the comments. I will answer those questions. Again, if you need one-on-one -on -one support, which is what I'm here for, um, please make sure that you reach out to me. If you go to shalitaoneal.com, there's a number of different ways I can support you. I can support you through one-on-one -on -one coaching. I can um, support you through, we have a membership, nonprofit, no filter membership. Um, you know, as well. So you can pick which membership level works for you so we can work together that way. You can enroll in our nonprofit Visionaries Academy, which, you know, goes into detail about some of the logistics, provides forms, templates, all of that. I'm here to help you build a successful, lasting nonprofit organization, okay? Um, and so we have another question. Ishan, would you dress business or business casual? And typically, um, whatever you're comfortable with um, between the two of those. So so, you know, again, my experience um, is with foundation, executive directors foundation, it's business casual. You know, they're not coming to work in three-piece suits. You know, they're, they're, they're comfortable, you know, because they have to deal with the community. They have to, you know, or the people that are working with the people in the community. They, they're, they're out and about. They have to be, you know, practical. So um, if, if, you can, if you wanted to present in a three-piece suit, you know, looking all hot and everything because you got all these layers on, you could do that if you want to, but um, business casual should be fine. Um, unless, you, you know, from talking to your board or people who might know this, you know, executive director, 
and then maybe they have a thing for they you know they 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 want you to dress a certain way and maybe they maybe they may not tell you that but the people that who, who are have connected you to this meeting know something about them you know then um <laughs> then you know then then you dress all the way up but that's not necessary yeah yeah no, yeah and it i mean it doesn't depend on where typically where they're going to have you meet them is going to be a place where it's transactional, you know, it's Panera, you know, um, corner bakery, you know, something like that. Like they're not gonna, it's not going to be some sort of bougie roof, Chris. They're not, mm -mm, they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that to you. <laughs> okay, guys. So again, thank you for joining me. If you have more questions, just reach out. Let me know, put it in the comments, um, box. And again, make sure you go to ShalitaO'Neal.com, which I'll also put the link um, for you guys um, in, in the description of this video as well, because there's a lot of different ways that I can continue to help and support you. Otherwise, you can see me here every Wednesday and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern to talk. Okay, um, we're going to talk about, we're going to have fun, you know, we're going to get some things done, but you know, it's really about helping you to make sure you build a strong foundation. And thank you, Ishan. Thank you, Tia. Hey, thank you, Justin. Thank you, everybody who, who joined and who has been supporting me and really sharing the videos because my goal is to help as many people as possible start strong nonprofit organizations and people, everyday people who have the passion, the discipline, and the drive. The nonprofit world is not reserved for the elite, okay? It looks like that and a lot of times it feels like that, but I'm here to help you get to a status where in the communities, the nonprofits, the large nonprofits will look like the people it will reflect the people in the community, okay? So um, y'all have a blessed weekend. Don't get into too much trouble because we need to meet again on Wednesday of next week, okay? All right, y'all. I'll talk to you soon.